Why? 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 Why is this not in the game? Why? Why? I'm not very happy when it comes to uh, maps that don't get added in a big update like this. I guess that's one of the only negatives I have about this here to stay update. It's the fact that some maps didn't make it because sometimes the creators are not very good people. You know, and I'm not very happy about that as a whole. You know, so yeah. Okay, so note for the video, I did not know that it was called the Here to Stay update. I had to re record the audio just because uh, it's not the every map update. Uh, that's my bad. Also, isn't it funny how every map that meme is now relevant? Fop Doodle, you are. You're in history right now. You're in. You're a part of history right now. Hello, lovely folks. We're gonna be reviewing highlights from the Here to Stay update. I'm really excited. Yay! So, uh, I'm only gonna be talking about maps that I've actually beaten. So I'm not going to talk about something like Central Mass Array or Abandoned Junkyard, because I haven't been in it. And also to make it fair as well, um, I'm only going to be talking about maps that have actually been updated um, past their highlight. Like, after they got highlighted, if they got updated in any way, uh, I'm going to potentially include it in the video. I'm not going to get through every map, but uh, hopefully I get through almost every map. Yeah. I might have also double lied. I'm giving a nice little uh, thumbs up to Undersea Facility. I have not beaten the map. I haven't tried it since like, what, like a year ago? Uh. So I can't really say much about the map. I did hear that it got a new um, updated soundtrack and the map got a nice little revamp and it looks really nice. But I haven't personally beaten it. I have attempted it a couple times, but um, yeah. But honestly, I will say the map has significantly improved uh, compared to the original version. So um, big thumbs up to the creators. Oftentimes, when I play FD2, I, uh, I think of Virulent Junkyard, and it's for the simple fact that this map is just great. I gotta say, the first two versions of this map, uh, peak FD2 map, you know? I I'ma just be honest, the design's pretty great, the soundtrack's a banger, and the gameplay's really fun for both versions. I'd honestly say V2 is better, though. And then we get version 3, or version 4, I don't really, I can't really tell the difference between the two, besides that the soundtrack is different, but, yes, we got a massive revamp compared to uh, the previous two, and I have to say, I kinda like it. I'd say the gameplay is more butter smooth compared to the other two, where now, I think it's much less, um just like raw like gameplay you know that's like the wall jumps are like a, a big factor in the old versions that i think made it hard and also some uh random long jumps spr uh, sprinkled in there but um in this newer version it's more just um can you be quick that's the main objective if you are quick you most likely will be able to beat the map um but yeah i mean for the most part um, V3 is pretty cool. I like the, I like the darker atmosphere now. The lava, uh, being less bright is pretty nice as well. Uh, the design's pretty great. And, uh, yeah. I mean, it's just got solid gameplay. A rather peculiar map here. 
Jungle Exploration is the one map that I surprisingly like, you know? As a whole, you know, compared to the other highlights uh, in that month, you know, it was it was pretty stacked, I'm not gonna lie. You know, and ultimately, you know, I'm just gonna say it, the my least favorite out of the four uh, got permanently added. But who cares now, because all four are in the game, you know? But Jungle Exploration was always a, a hidden gem for me, because, I don't know, it feels weirdly nostalgic. But it also has a sprinkle of, you know, newer mechanics, obviously with sliding and zip lines, but also exploding buttons, you know? It's pretty cool. Uh, regardless, the map is uh, pretty, the design's pretty minimal, but it's really, uh, really pretty. You know, um, and I like the gameplay quite a bit, you know, it's pretty unique. You know, there's, it's not like a straight path, there's some twists and turns here and there. And not only that, but it's also accessible for people who are late in, in the map, you know, who are behind. They have other paths they can take, and I kind of like that. It's like a, a choose-your-own-adventure type map, you know, and I kind of, I respect it. Let me tell you something real quick. When it comes to FE2 maps, it's all, it's nothing but opinions, you know? That's the one thing I have to mention when I, I'm doing this video. So, hear me out when I say that Lilac Valley has now become one of my favorite FE2 maps as of late. You know? The old version wasn't really that bad either, like if I'm being real with you. The, the only thing that I could see people hating on it for is just the fact that it's too pink, but it's called Lilac Valley, so I, I don't know what you were expecting. But I will say this new updated version, way prettier. It, it's, man, that's why I made a gameplay video of it. It's just, it's just really great, you know? And I don't think enough people talk about it. It's, it's a huge glow up for Lilac Valley. I, I will say this, you know, it's just the design, so I can't really talk about much more than that, you know, the gameplay is still pretty clean, you know, for the most part, you know, a little iffy on the amount of zip lines in the beginning, but it is what it is, I guess, you know, after a certain point, I kind of have to stop complaining about how some map creators use an excessive amount of zip lines, um, but, you know, it does, they do tone it down a bit in the second half of the map, so it, it's cool. You are on an observatory peak, used to investigate destructive space powers. After a meteor crashed against the Onama land, a nearby water barrier broke, damaging buildings and causing an immense flood get to safety. That is a description of Onama Views, arguably the greatest FE2 map in the history of FE2 maps. I'm exaggerating a bit, but I will say this, Onama Views has that weirdly comforting gameplay, that weirdly comforting atmosphere. You know, I think it might be the color scheme, I think it might be the design, you know, it might also be the really good soundtrack made by Lemmy. Like. Damn, this map is just perfect. I, I don't really know. And I know I'm technically breaking the rules here. Like, while the map itself didn't really get updated, besides like maybe some some like detail changes here and there, I will count it since the soundtrack did get a version two. So, yeah, I just love this map. I don't know. I can't really explain it. It's just kind of. It's just the map that is so fun to play the gameplay while it isn't too easy it's also not too hard so it's just kind of like that middle road where it isn't all um it isn't like stupidly hard um and to the point where it's unenjoyable you know the design's very pleasant to the eye i like the purple blue and red kind of sprinkled around everywhere um and the flood 
is pretty considerate uh, in this map. You know, it's not like it's not like non-existent for 90% of the map, but it's also not, you know, it's just like all up in your face. You know, like most uh, uh, like insane maps. You know what I mean? You know, and I don't know. The idea is just cool. I I really like Onama views. Uh, but yeah, it's a. I'm gonna just say it, it's a massive upgrade from the uh, original version of the map. I like the detailing a lot. The gameplay I think is much less confusing now. It's much more smooth. It um it just runs smooth. It reminds me of Ignis Peaks a little bit with like the flat uh, horizontal gameplay more, and I I kind of like that because it's now it's no it's not like a you know, like a tower climb where you're basically just running away from the fast flood. It's it's not. It's kind of like a like it. It's like gradually like catching up. You know, it, I I like that. It's cool. Uh, the the other thing that I really like is the soundtrack. It's pretty minimal, but it kind of reminds me of like a, kind of like a resilient soundtrack almost. I think it's kind of cool. I don't know. Uh, I also like the end cutscene when you're on the zip line. I thought that was pretty nice. It was a nice little detail. You know, I don't really have much more to say. It's just an, a massive improvement from the original version, you know? It went from being somewhat forgettable to something I'd actually come back to, you know? And that's what most normal maps need to strive for, but sometimes it's kind of hard to do that. I'm going to just be real. Whoa, another amazing map. So, Skywork Falls, I'm just gonna keep it pretty short once again. Uh, the soundtrack is great. Uh, it's just so fucking good. I don't, I don't really know how else to say it. Uh, on top of that, you know, the, the gameplay, they kind of just stay the same for the most part, but it's still pretty snappy, pretty great. The detailing got even better. I think it's kind of that realism pack, I guess. I don't know what it's called, but it it looks slightly more realistic. It's really pretty now. Um, kind of similar to Lilac Valley, except I'd say this is even better, just because the the design is just wonderful. It's pleasant to view, you know? Not just from like a gameplay perspective, just like in general, you know? If you look at it, it's like, damn, that's pretty cool. Um, and the flood is pretty considerable, even though the map is like rated like a what, a 4.5 or something like that. It might be rated even higher, but still, it's it's a hard insane, you know. But yeah, I don't I don't really know what much more to say, you know. It's a massive improvement from the old version, even though the old version is already great in itself, you know. And finally, we have a normal map. Blooming Lagoon was honestly the biggest glow up out of any map here and it's simply because the old version was just not good at all. So the first version, I don't know if I'm going to have a clip of it, um, I probably won't, but regardless, I wasn't the biggest fan of just ziplining to different islands or whatever and just kind of like pressing buttons and going on another zip line and that and the ending of the map is so confusing or it was so confusing it was actually really annoying um that i ended up dying like once or twice uh when originally attempting it you know and the thing is with easy and normal maps at least with me if i die more than like more than like two times on your map that's when i start to think this map is not really normal and it's more exceeding the hard difficulty now it depends you know sometimes it's a skill issue but other times the map just doesn't have a clear sense of direction you know and that's what the original version of blooming lagoon had and 
that's kind of why I disliked it for a while. But after playing version 2, I gotta say, I take that shit back. I'm not gonna lie. You know, there is, um, it's more focused on just like two areas rather than like 40. And, you know, the map uh, has much more detail now, and I respect it. The direction still is slightly confusing. It took me at least a couple tries to uh, get consistent at it, but. I mean, regardless, it's still really great. I really like Lumine Lagoon as a whole, and it's just fun to play now, you know? Yeah. As a whole, I've had to cut at least like 10 different maps from this video, and it kind of sucked because I did want to talk about some of these maps. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if I want to do a part two, I'm probably not, just because I'm too lazy to do anything like that, um, but if anybody is curious, you know, I, I make videos, and you can check those out as well, you know, I, I've, I've done other things before on this channel, so if you are curious, just check them out, you know, do, 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 do,